Hi monkeys, here Kang. Uh, in the last video I showed you the performance record of David Ryan. Very impressive guy, right? Now the question is, how does this guy do it? What are his trading methodologies? So I will show you in this video. This is the second video in the David Ryan trilogy. Have you seen my last video? Uh, he made calls on Twitter in 2022 and 23. And had you followed uh, his advice, you would have made 170 his market calls were almost divine, like a god. The numbers speak for themselves. He never wrote a book, but he appears in two books. Actually, he appears in Market Wizard Volume 1, uh, which will be uh, the base of today's lecture. And he also appears in the book Momentum Masters. Maybe I will uh, make a video about that uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, David Ryan was the disciple of William O'Neill. He entered William O'Neill's company. He became the youngest vice president in 1986. And while he was working for William O'Neill, he became the US investing champion for three years straight. In 1985, 86 and 87, in these three years, he had a cumulative return of 1,379 which is pretty impressive. And he said uh, this period between 1980 something, you know, uh, he read 4,000 charts every week. You know, this is pretty impressive because at that time there was no internet. Actually, he has, I have no idea how he got all these charts, you know. And he said uh, he took the charts uh, and uh, after work he went home also during the weekend and he read charts for 24 hours. You know. Okay, for, well, not for 24, maybe he also slept a little. But uh, anyway, he read a lot of charts in these uh, years, you know, and he said, I learned which patterns the gray stocks show before they rise. And, and he said, you have to buy precisely after the breakout. If you buy 15 or 20 percent higher, generally the stock is overextended. And uh, this was his major mistake in 1983 or 1984. So in these years, you know, he also bought breakout stocks, but uh, way too late, you know. Uh, uh, for example, if the st stock breaks out at $50, you know, uh, he uh, generally bought at, I don't know, $55, $60, which is too expensive, you know. And, and he also said, avoid stocks below $10. There are reasons why these uh, stocks are so cheap. And, uh, and he said, he weeded out stocks of mediocre charts and then apply the cancel method on the rest of these stocks. And he said the most important um, uh, ratio is the relative strength or the RS ratio. Sorry, my R pronunciation is pretty bad because I'm a Korean, you know. So there's a score between 0 and 100 points. And if uh, the uh, relative strength score is 95 points, it means last year's uh, stock return was better than 95% of all stocks. So you assume um, you have 1000 stocks, you know, and if uh, your score is 95, your stock return in the last year was in the top 50 stocks, you know, because 950 stocks were worse than you, you know. So you are in the top 5%. So um, a score above 80 is a must, David Ryan says. Above 90 is much better and 99 is better than 95. He also said the trend of the relative strength score is also important. Going from 95 to 99 is good, but the other way uh, is less good, he said. And he also looks at the, uh, at the relative strength of, relative, of the related industry or sector. And um, the industry or sector relative strength score should be in the top 25 percent. And so the relative strength, so how strong the stock went up in the la uh, last year, this is very important, you know. The next important thing is the growth of the EPS. EPS stands for earnings per share. So EPS growth of the last two quarters is very important. And the EPS growth of the last five years is also important. And actually he mixes up these two numbers and comes up with an EPS score. So the score is also between 0 and 100. And he required the EPS score of at least 80. 90 is better. And he had many stocks with an EPS score of 99 or more. And he says stocks generally advance after the EPS growth appears on the income statement. You know, uh, so, uh, so you don't have to guess the EPS of these companies. You just wait until the EPS actually appears in the financial, sh uh, financial statement. You know, and there are two reasons, he says. The first one is in a bear market, people on the estimate 
underestimate the strength of growth. And the second one is um, people generally underestimate the strength of the growth. They say, yeah, well, the EPS, uh, EPS growth last quarter was pretty good, but I, but I don't think this will last. Many people think um, the growth was very short term thing, you know, and they don't expect the growth to continue, you know. So you can wait until the growth actually appears on the financial statement. And then uh, he checks the rest of the canceling elements. S stands for supply of tradable stock. Uh, he liked stocks which has uh, less than 30 million tradable stocks and 5 to 10 million is much better, he says. So he rather uh, prefers small stocks compared to big stocks. Uh, I stands for institutional support. Institutions should own 1 to 20 percent of the stock because uh, if they have, um, yeah, if they have, for example, 50 or 60 percent, they cannot make another purchase, right? And if the institutional um, institutional share is below one person, it says nobody is interested in that company, right? And N stands for new. Uh, new can mean new industry, new company, new product, new management, new something, you know. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so actually, uh, David Ryan looks at the charts first, and if the look chart looks good, uh, he's looking uh, for companies which um, fulfill the uh, canceling requirements. So he said, after the filtering, you're left with 70 stocks out of 7,000. Now he has to get them down to seven because he only invests in seven companies at the same time. Okay, and uh, the M, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Slim has uh, seven alphabets and M was missing. How to differentiate between bull and bear markets? Uh, well, David Ryan says in bear markets, you just should not trade that much. You should uh, just take a break, you know. And uh, he says, if the index goes up, but the leading stocks begin to fall, the end is near. And the ADX index is also very important. It stands for advanced decline line. And uh, uh, it says uh, this ADL uh, falls before the index is tanking. So ADL is also a very great indicator, he said. Okay, so now let's come back. So he had 70 stocks left. And how can he reduce the 70 stocks to seven stocks? He says, he looks at the chart again, and he finds companies with proper basis, you know. Uh, but it is very important, before building the base, the, sto uh, the stock should have increased two or threefold uh, before building the base. So what is a base? Uh, well, for example, if you go to Mount Everest, you just uh, don't climb up, climb up, climb up all the way, right? Uh, you climb up a little, then you have a, a base camp where you rest, right? The stocks are uh, like the same. They advance uh, for, uh, for, for a while, you know, uh, they go up for a while, then they take a rest, you know, build a base where it goes sideways, you know, and uh, hopefully uh, it breaks out of the base again and advances again, you know. Uh, and so David Ryan said, a stock which has already doubled often doubles again. So and now comes the very important part. So now, uh, as you can see on the chart uh, on the left side, you can see what a base looks like, right? So the stock has advanced and now goes sideways in the trading range, right? And then he says, you just have to draw a line across the top of where most of the stock is trading. Um, you just have to draw a line across the top of where most of the stock's trading has taken place. And then you buy as it, move, uh, as it moves through that line. Uh, on this chart, you can see it very clearly. Uh, here you can see you had a, a flat base, right, which was running for around, I don't know, uh, four, six weeks. And then you draw a line across the top and across the bottom, right? And then the stock breaks out through that line and then you buy. So in this case, uh, you could have bought twice, right? Uh, the first time on July, and the second time in October. Very clear, very simple, right? So for example, this is sample, this was Bitcoin, you know. Uh, Bitcoin was moving sideways uh, for six months from April to October 2023, you know. And I actually uh, bought uh, when Bitcoin moved through that line. Here you can see a box, you know, and you can uh, uh, see a line across the top and across the bottom, you know. And it was, I think, October 24 when Bitcoin went uh, through the upper line. That's, that was the day when I bought, and this is a topic of the next video. But the most important thing, of course, is risk management. So if Dave Ryan buys a stock, if the stock has fallen 7% or more, he just sells. 
he sells. He just sells. Regardless of the stock we'll be doing later, you know, he just sells, you know. Uh, so you can see that he generally loses less than 1% of his assets on a single position because he has seven different positions, right? So he invests uh, around 14% of his assets on that one stock. And if you lose 7% on that stock, it exactly means you lost 1% of your assets on that one trade, you know. So for example, you have $10,000, right? And then you invest one seventh of it in one stock, which will be around $1,400, right? And if you have a, um, and if you sell, if the stock has gone, gone down 7%, you would have lost $100. Uh, if your asset base is $10,000, you would have lost exactly 1%. And he says about the holding period, he holds the gray stocks for 6 to 12 months, he holds the okay stocks for about 3 months, and the losers he sells in less than 2 weeks. And actually David Ryan says he has a winning ratio of around 50%. So if he buys 10 stocks, 5 go up and 5 go down. But he says few stocks make 100 or 200% and they make up for all the small losses. And, and when, uh, when does he sell? He just follows the trend. He waits until it builds another base. If the stock breaks below the support line, he just sells. And now listen very carefully. Jack Schweger uh, asked the market wizard, you buy a stock at 21, which was formerly between 16 and 20. So what if the stock comes back to 20? And David Ryan said, yeah, well, I sell ha at least half of my position at 90.75. Because a stock which comes down to 90.75 uh, might uh, often goes back to 16. So you can see on this chart, uh, there's a resistance line and a support line, right? The support would be $16 and resistance would be 20 dollars and uh, uh, you bought at 21 when the stock was going above the resistance line right but then it comes back below 20 then you just sell out because it might go down to the support line of 16 so uh, you can see his stop loss is generally much shorter than seven person because in this case he would have bought at 21 and sell at 90.75 and uh, he also said, did you make money on the first day? It's the best indicator of the trade will be successful. And uh, he was also asked, why do you always buy stocks at the 52 weeks high? And David Ryan said, if you uh, buy a stock which has fallen a lot, you have a lot of overhang from above. Uh, so for example, if you buy a stock which went down from $100 to $20, then there are a lot of people who bought higher than you, uh, like at 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. And these guys uh, um, all want to sell if, you, if they break even, right? So if the stock advances, there are a lot of people with overhang uh, who, who sell stock yeah, because they reached break even, you know. And uh, you have to go through all the overhang um, uh, to make sizable gains with your, uh, with your stock, right? And however, if you bought at a new high price, no one ever bought higher. Everyone is happy and the upside is open. And you should buy uh, if the price has uh, reached a new high and if uh, there is a um, very high volume breakout because it means there's much interest in the stock which is great for you and uh, but it is important uh, after the breakout uh, the volume should be big but before the breakout uh, there should be a, a contraction of volatility and volume this is very desirable you can see here on the second chart you know on the left side the volatility was level high you know in the middle the volatility is getting reduced and on the right side the volatility is now even getting smaller right and uh, generally David Ryan does not wait for a pullback after a breakout and he says uh, after the breakout of course there will be a correction but um, uh, during the correction the volume should be low because um, uh, if, if there's high volume in a correction period it means many people are running away. So there was one thing uh, where David Ryan was different from his teacher, William O'Neill. William O'Neill said the price earnings ratio for stock, stock uh, he doesn't care about it, it's not important. But David Ryan says avoid stocks with too high PER. So he says uh, to buy, um, buy stocks with a price earnings ratio uh, which is only one to two times higher than the market average. So for example, uh, uh, if the Nasdaq has a price earnings ratio of 30, you should buy stocks with a price earnings ratio below 60. 
And he also has some advice for beginners. He said, learn from your mistakes. Uh, so he advises us to write a trading diary uh, where I write my reasons for my buy and sell decisions. Of course, you have to analyze them later. Then we will find out, why did I make such a mistake? I'm such an idiot. I'm a fool. And um, during this analysis, you get better and better. He said um, he had this trading um, diary and he fi found out his biggest mistakes were buying overextended stocks and he was actually too aggressive in the bear market between 1982 and 83, he said. And he says great books were written by William O'Neill, Davos and uh, Jesse Livermore. But he says the market is the greatest teacher. To sum up, well, so David Ryan is admittedly a trading god. How does a god trade? First of all, uh, charts are more important than fundamentals. And you buy stocks which already went up a lot, you know, and which breaks out from their base. And he said stocks with high relative strength and uh, a rising relative strength is great. The same, uh, same goes with EPS growth. Surprisingly, David Ryan had a winning ratio of only 50%, but he cuts short his losses and lets his winners run on. This is very, very important. So thank you very much uh, for watching the video. The next video uh, will be how I applied David Ryan's method to buy Bitcoin in October 24, uh, October 24, 2023. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. Uh, please uh, push the subscriber and the like button below. Thank you very much.